Riddle me this. What project is a greater success the more it sucks? Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another video. This time, this is actually the first project of the year. Now, I started this last year, clearly. It's taken me quite a while um, ordering parts and getting them in and whatnot. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, so let's have a word from them. A word from this video sponsor. Got an idea for a circuit, widget, or device that you want to rapid prototype or sell? Check out JLC PCB. They offer their board manufacturing services starting at two bucks for five boards and only take a few days from start to finish. So make sure to check out JLC PCB. And once again, thanks for making this video possible. Now let's get on with the video. Okay, so yeah, I ordered these boards and I already soldered one up. I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. And this is a little bugger here, and I'm just going to disconnect it from power just to show you up close what it is, what it does. Where's my uh, tweezers? There we go. Okay, so here's the board. Basically, it takes 9 volts into these pins. There's a 5 volt regulator for the logic, and I've moved on. So normally, I would throw an AT Mega 328P at this project which only really requires like a handful of pins. So I've recently uh, started using the AT Tiny series of microprocessors, plus they're more widely available right now. So this guy is using AT Tiny 84. And yeah, uh, so I, I guess before we really get into nuts and bolts, this all started when I found this motor and I, I'd taken apart something, I forget what it was. I think it was like some kind of gas leak analyzer that I found at a thrift store like ages ago. And I took all the parts out of it and whatever I could reuse, I put in the box. And I found that box recently and I found this tiny little pump. And I've been doing a lot of SMD like reflow soldering with like super ridiculously tiny LEDs if you've seen my last project video. And I hand place those all by tweezer and it was kind of a nightmare. So I kind of want to going forward, if, if I'm not going to get something that's super tiny manufactured by a JLC PCB, if I want to do it myself, I want to at least make it a little easier on myself. And that's where this little tiny pump comes in. You can see two little arrows. One goes in and one goes out. So if we stick a little bit of tubing here, I got some silicone tubing and... I forget the exact dimensions of this. I think it's like three mil, three millimeters or something like that. Uh, probably outer diameter, maybe two inner, maybe 1.5 inner, I forget. Anyway, if you stick that on the end here, like so, and uh, turn on the pump, it'll actually draw a vacuum. And it draws a pretty decent vacuum, I found, for this tiny little pump. And the voltage rating on this guy is 3.5 to 5 volts. So perfect for running off of 5 volts. I've actually ran this off of uh, 9 volts, well, 8 or 9-ish, and it it's, it's a champ. <laughs> anyway, here you can see exactly how it works. There's kind of this offset cam, and there's a plunger that goes into like a little rubber, kind of looks like a diaphragm or something, a, a baffle. And as it rotates up and down, it squeezes in and out, and... Inside here, you can actually unscrew this. I'm not going to do this right now. It's kind of annoying to get back on there. Uh, there's uh, some like little tiny valves, and it's basically just like a hole in the plastic and then a tiny little hole with like a flap of rubber on it. And so they, they have one-way valves that are created so that when this piston, piston is going in and out, it's uh, creating a constant vacuum in one direction, and then it, it pumps the air into the other. And so this would be perfect to make a tiny little vacuum pump. And after playing around with that, I wanted to see if I could get a smaller one and see if that would work. And this just arrived today. Uh, this is kind of beat up. Also a 5-volt pump. Yeah, kind of hard to see. There you go. So micro water pump. Also pumps air. 
And this guy is even quieter than this, but it has a little less power. But I wanted more than one pump just to play around with to see what kind of vacuum levels I can expect. What, what can I go down to? Because I would prefer the quieter pump. And plus, this is a little bit smaller, so I could make the entire case a little bit smaller as well. Because I plan on making this handheld battery powered off of 9 volt batteries. So I know it's a weird choice to choose 9 volts. A lot of other people would probably have gone with like uh, a couple double A's stacked in series or maybe a lipo and then like a boost converter, but whatever. I chose 9 volt because I have tons of 9 volt batteries. Pretty much we, we change our fire alarms quite often here. They run off of these 9 volt batteries and even after like a couple months of them running, they still have most of their capacity left when we changed them. That might sound kind of wasteful, but it's better to, to change them than to wake up one day and have a dead fire alarm and your house is on fire. That's if you wake up at all. Anyway, that just got really grim. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I got that. I have plenty of little sil silicone tubing that I can use or vinyl. I don't know. This is probably vinyl. It smells like vinyl. Anyway, I got plenty of those. I have these little syringes, and I've, I've bent one of the tips on one of them and, you know, stuck them through and just to test as a impromptu tip. And I have one of these handheld tools, and they're pretty crappy. Uh, this was like a dollar or two. And the idea is you create the, the vacuum by pressing on the button and then releasing it. And then when you press on it again, it releases the part. Uh, the seal on this isn't so great. It never really worked great, honestly. So I have that, I have, uh, this is a solenoid valve, and I can't remember if this is a normally open or normally closed one, and we'll get to why in a sec, why I think I need that, possibly. I might not, actually, but it was like $2, so whatever. And the final uh, piece de resistance is this tiny little board here. And so generally what I did was, uh, there are a number of inputs and outputs. So this is a battery input from 9 volts. It generates 5 volts internally using this linear regulator. There is a switch. So I literally have a switch plugged into that. And that allows you to turn it on and off. I didn't bother with soft power on this. I, I didn't think it was really worth it. Just put, put an LED indicator so you know when it's on and hard power. And speaking of which, all the LED indicators are up top here. There is one... Sorry about that. There is one indicator for whether the vacuum pump is on, another for whether this um, this entire circuitry is powered on from the switch, and there's a low battery indicator here. And these are all software configurable, controllable via the AT Tiny. Additionally, here we have because we're driving inductive loads with these different solenoids and motors and whatnot, I have a flyback diode on each of the outputs and they're each driven by a NPN transistor. And I doubled up the NPN for the pump because I wasn't sure how much current that was going to possibly draw. Uh, ends up being that this pump here only draws about like 50 milliamps at five volts. So this uh, NPN transistor is way overkill for that. I think this guy can do like 200 or 300 milliamps. So no worries there. <laughs> and most interestingly, so my idea is to have a foot switch to activate it, which will go into these pins. And if you just short them, there's a internal pulp on the chip. If you just short them, it's basically a dumb switch. It'll activate the pump. Uh, here's the pump output and then the valve if I need to control the solenoid valve. If, if I don't end up using it, I just won't plug anything into that. And here you'll notice... I've been doing a lot of touch sensor projects uh, in the past, and so I integrated a touch sensor. Now, I'm using a different library this time. The other one required you to use a high-value resistor, like a 1 mega ohm resistor, and to have an extra sense pin. Uh, this one uses only one pin. Uh, there is a catch, though. It uses the ADC, so you can only use an ADC pin. And I'll, I'll put a, you know, a, a note down below what library I'm using exactly, I had to modify it because that library apparently only worked with the ATmega328P. And so I had to, uh, I, I copied the software and I tweaked it slightly uh, in the ADC configuration to get it to work with the ATtiny84. And now it works perfectly. So this pad is just a touch pad. And if you just touch the PCB or even get kind of close to it, it'll trigger. So I'm going to design the case such that there's a little dip in the plastic 
where this button is so you just touch it and it'll activate the pump or you can use a foot switch and ignore that i added a little solder pad also right there so that you could solder a wire to like a piece of copper and move the pad wherever you want so yeah that's basically it's a, it's a pretty simple board i'm really only using like five or six uh io on this on this chip and i think i have like you know a handful of pins left i could add more functionality but i just thought try to keep it stupidly simple anyway we'll uh, plug this in and i will uh give a quick test here and for the pump i don't think it the direction actually matters they are marked positive and negative but at least this pump it doesn't matter which direction this spins it always pumps in the same direction anyway we have it all plugged in now and for the the hose originally i'd actually found from a ink, an old inkjet printer this cable and i cut off one of the uh one of the hoses or whatever <laughs> anyway and then i stuck it on here and so this I, i'm maybe going to use this or maybe the clear one uh, this one has a slightly larger diameter, so it gives a little bit better vacuum pressure. And I took a, a spring from a ballpoint pen just to kind of give it a little strain relief there. And I just have this end right here, which allows me to plug it into any of these pumps quite easily. And right now, this is just all kind of flippy floppy. I'm going to actually design a pen or uh, I have, let's see, right here. This was the original part for the gas leak detector thing that I took most of the parts, like the pump, for instance, from. And this has a nice kind of handle. The only thing is this uh, vinyl tubing off the back is like really stiff, so it keeps wanting to move your hand. But the part that I really like about it is this unscrews. And there's built in, there's like a little brush to catch debris so that if... Because this was originally supposed to suck stuff in uh, to keep dust from getting into the pump and clogging it up. So I really like that. So I might actually maybe cut off the end of this, get this tubing, and uh, maybe 3D print a little adapter I can glue on so that I can just like a little nipple that this will slide over. And somehow attach this to the end. And so I think that'll be probably what I end up doing. But just for testing purposes, I have a few chips and stuff here. And uh, I can switch this on. There are no LEDs right now, but you can hear. I have it set so that it turns on. And this is actually really quiet. But uh, the cool thing about this is, let me maybe grab, I think this battery is starting to die. But the cool thing about this is I programmed this. If you hold any, either the foot switch or the touchpad when you boot it up, it'll switch between momentary and it'll or toggle so that you press it once and it it'll uh, retain it'll keep the pump on the whole time and you press it again to turn it off or momentary is a little less wasteful uh, but you can see here it can totally pick up this uh, 14 pin so uh, soic it can almost pick up this QFP, there you go. It can pick it up, but you got to get the head aligned uh, pretty well because uh, there is no rubber insert on this. I do have from the uh, the vacuum pen that I bought. It does come with its own tip, and here it is. And it does have these little rubber pads, and that helps immensely with this. And I'll demo that in one second. But in terms of picking up other parts, anything smaller than like a uh, Soic, it'll pick up real easily. So here I have a tantalum, no problems. And once you release, it just drops. Even this uh, tack switch, you can hear it does struggle on the heavier parts when you go to pick them up. Here I have a, a 1206 LED. Here I have, I wouldn't go much lower than an 0603. I believe this is an 0603. That's almost the, uh, it can almost just about get sucked into the nozzle. So I would need a smaller nozzle if I want to go 0402. But that works just fine. I have a SOT23 here. No problem at all. You'll notice whenever I pick up a larger part and it blocks more of the nozzle, the noise coming from the motor, it'll struggle more and it'll make a little more noise. But it seems to work just fine. Yeah, that, that actually works pretty well. 
Now, if I were to use this other nozzle with the actual rubber tips on it, I'll just shove this in here, good enough. This can easily pick up larger parts because it creates a better vacuum. Uh, what you might have noticed, if I actually had a more powerful pump, like when I plug this guy in, uh, and if I increase the, the drive voltage instead of the 5 volts from the board, if I were to plug this straight into like an 8, eight or 9 volt power source, like, uh, you know, directly into the battery, 9 volt battery, when you actually draw a vacuum and create a seal with the rubber tip onto these parts, even if after you release power, it'll hold on to the parts. And that's not good because you want it to not just pick up parts securely, but also drop them ex at the exact moment that you release the vacuum so that you can place them down smoothly so you don't accidentally move it around or something weird. So I was that's why I was worrying. I was thinking about using a T-junction, like this little guy, and a solenoid so I can cut off the vacuum and uh, port it to atmosphere so that it'll automatically re release the vacuum from the tip but it actually looks like if you drive it with a lower power pump and uh, at a lower voltage it looks like it'll release on its own the vacuum seal isn't as good you see it just drops there yeah I, I think I don't actually need this little solenoid uh, though it'll be useful to, to have this in the parts bin later but yeah I think this will work just fine so I need to say, like I said, make a system so I can plug in either of these tips. Because the only thing that stinks about this tip is it's so large, this could probably very easily suck in these smaller surface mount parts. Uh, so I would use this tip if I'm going to use these silicone little plugs, and then you just unplug it and plug in the finer tip if you're doing smaller parts. So having interchangeable tips might actually be a good idea, and I can try to design some kind of 3d printed thing that'll go into there like that and the cool thing about using these uh these these uh syringe tips is they actually have like a standardized threading so you can actually make a part that if i just remove this easily threads in and it creates an airtight seal just by you twisting it so that was another option i was thinking of making a handle out of this and then you just screw in the tips and I would, uh, I could probably 3D print or maybe cut off a syringe tip for another one of the syringes and mount this to it somehow. So I could make this twist lock as well. So that's another option I was thinking of. So yeah, uh, that's more or less it. Uh, one other last thing. Uh, I've been scrounging around for, for different switches i think i pulled this from a telephone this is i think the receiver hang up switch and it has way more contacts than i need but i was thinking of uh, also making my own foot pedal switch because i looked online for like a cheap used one i know i've seen them at my local thrift store for like five bucks and i would totally buy one for five bucks i went online and they're like they want 30 or 40 bucks for them so no i'm not gonna pay that so i might end up just making my own foot switch and I could use this or one of those like arcade uh, momentary switches I think uh, would work pretty well sort of like a limit switch that, that are used in 3d printers but anyway yeah uh, that's basically where I'm at right now I have just a bunch of tube and I've been playing around with this and it, it seems to work pretty well and yeah, this guy's off just to make sure uh, so we are all set for the kind of the guts of the system now i need to actually now that i have this motor in hand i'm going to take some measurements i'll do a couple more tests switching these out see which one's better if i do end up using this one i'll probably rotate it sideways so i can make the device thinner make it a little fatter but a little thinner uh, so now we're going to have to go around and design a case for this which is going to be quite interesting good thing about using 9 volts is they're easier to change there's only one battery and it has its own snap contacts and it takes up less room this will get less runtime sure but I'd, I'd actually have to measure how much current is directly being drawn I can actually do that right now so it draws about 109 unloaded and I'm gonna guess that it, it's probably gonna double if I uh if I apply a vacuum to that, I'm just guessing. I don't know because I don't feel like trying to juggle a bunch of uh, 
probes and try to do this with one hand. But anyway, yeah, so we're going to say it's in the neighborhood of like two or 300 milliamps uh, from a 9-volt source it's going to draw. So 9-volt batteries, I don't know. I've read a whole bunch of different sources. They say they run from anywhere from like a couple hundred milliamps. So you might only get like two to four hours of, of runtime off of a battery like this. And that's if you're running the pump continuously, which is, that's a great thing. When you're picking and placing, you're not running the pump continuously. You're only activating the the uh, pump when you're actually lifting parts. When you're putting, once you release them, put them down, go to pick up the next, next part, there's basically dead time in between then. So I have a feeling this will this will have okay battery life, not great. Uh, but like I said, I have plenty of these batteries, and you can buy rechargeable 9-volt batteries, so that's definitely an option in the future. You can get ones with USB ports in the bottom. But yeah, I think I covered kind of conceptually everything. I know that was a bit of a ramble, a 20-freaking-minute ramble, but uh, just stay with me here. So next up, we're going to design a case for this. Uh, now that I can actually physically measure all the parts, I was waiting on this. Uh, part online uh, I ordered it from China and they did not give like any measurements that I could use uh, so I'm going to actually probably draw this up in CAD um, I'm going to draw up all the parts physically in CAD and then design the the case around it it's going to be a two-part case likely uh, sort of clamshell very similar to sort of the the design that I came up with for the fume fan just like four screws or whatever I might try to experiment with a clip so if I can get around it maybe one screw in the center and just clips along the side something like that I I'll figure that out uh, so this will this is the end of the first video that'll be the second video and probably at the end of the second video once I actually have a final device in my hands uh, then we'll go for a pick and place marathon <laughs> So anyway, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this like pretty random video. Um, it's sort of a little different than projects I've made in the past. Well, to be fair, this is a project that is a tool that I'm making myself because I can use it and because I, I'm too cheap to, to put out money to buy like the actual tool. And I know other people just use aquarium pumps and they have them running the whole time and they have a hole that they, they drill into the handle. Uh, and then that's how they release the vacuum. There's no smarts in their system, which is great and all if that's what you're going for. But I kind of wanted to design something a little neater, in my opinion. Uh, so, yeah, if you guys are interested, uh, once this is done, yeah, all the design files, everything is, is going up. Um, as well as if I use this pump, you will all be able to get your hands on this for pretty cheap. If I use this pump, you unfortunately won't. So maybe I'll try making it so you can use either pump. Even if I end up using this pump, there'll be an option that you can throw this kind of pump in. Uh, because this I pulled from a random device, and I doubt you're going to be able to get uh, Thomas to send you one of these when this is already a few years old. <laughs> So anyway, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any specific suggestions on what you think I should do in terms of uh, filtering or uh, how to hook up the air passageways or any functional issues that you potentially see and have any suggestions to improve, uh, let me know down below. I'm definitely interested in getting some feedback because a lot of times I design these projects and then I show you the finished project where it's too late for me to make any changes anyway. Uh, this time I thought I would do the opposite. I would, I would do a work in progress, show you what I have so I can actually get some valuable feedback that I can use in the next stage of the design. So anyway, yeah, I will see you in the next one. Bye.